Well, hello everybody, Trix here, and welcome to Mario Kart. Super Mario Kart, to be precise. The first game in this series is also something I'm going to check off my list for now. Because yes, this is also a series I am going to cover on this channel. Mario Kart, by far my favorite quote-unquote ongoing race series. I know F-Zero is also a thing with me, stay tuned for that as well, but Mario Kart, speaking of gaming series that still exist, is by far my favorite. You can see this little tutorial that's going on right now how to see how it works. Mario Kart being famous for almost everything it does. It has great aesthetics, great racing mechanics, awesome atmosphere both by its graphics and the music it offers. A great cast of characters we all know and love. The Mario cast. Come on, what's not to love about this game? And probably even more famous, its item system. I know it's done a lot these days with other of these kinds of racing games, but Mario Kart is the one that introduced it and is the one who's famous for it. Even if you're the most skilled player in this, even the ones without as much a skill, still have a chance because of its item system and besides giving the less skilled players a little bit more of a chance it also offers great chaos. All the items being thrown, thrown around by all the drivers to bully each other, to troll each other, it's just tons of fun. You can get very frustrating at times, controller throwing Kinds of frustration, but still, at the end of the day, we all love this series and every single game in its every single installment in its series. We love them all. Let's get started. How I'm going to do this? Honestly, as fun as this game is, I would like to think content-wise. And when it comes to content, this game does tend to get a little repetitive because. It has only four Grand Prix, and it has three difficulty classes, as you can see here. 50cc, 100cc, and 150cc. It's not just the engine class that's being specified here. 50cc being the slowest, 100cc being a little bit faster, and 150cc being the fastest. But that's not all. It also affects the difficulty, because the AI... We're obviously playing single player here, because this is a single player channel, so I'm doing the single player mode of this. So you race against AI, and the computer-controlled characters are better the higher the class is. So you can also look at this as easy, normal, hard. Right now I'm doing 50cc class first, just to show off every difficulty. And in order to prevent things being too repetitive, I've decided in this game, and games after this, and even the ones who are similar to this, like F-Zero that I mentioned earlier, I've decided to do every single Grand Prix twice. Maybe not so much a problem in this game, because this game isn't as big as the future ones, but I'd like to be consistent with every single one of the installments. Doing the first time through, switching off the difficulty levels, in this case the bottom two, and the second time I go through I do everything on the highest difficulty class. So right now I'm starting with 50cc, doing the next cup with 50cc as well, then I'm going to ramp it up to 100, do the final two, and then I'll be back the weekend after that with the highest engine class. So I won't do this game, yeah, you know, I, I won't do too few things of it, because going through it once it will end off way too soon. Showing off everything once is yeah, a little too few content, but showing everything off, it will become too repetitive. Might, might not be a problem here, like I said earlier, because there are only three difficulty classes with four um, Grand Prix. Let's call them Grand Prix. I usually also call them Cups, but Grand Prix is a little more clear, I think. But I've decided to do it consistent with other games where the number of difficulty classes and the number of Grand Prix increase. 
Otherwise these projects will never end. So I'm doing it with this game as well. So it will mean 8 Grand Prix for me to cover this game. Which is a nice number because there happen to be 8 drivers in this game. I'm starting with my least favorite and I'm working up to my most favorite. That's how I think it's going to be a fun thing to do. My least favorite character in this game, sorry for the ones who do like them, is Donkey Kong Jr. Why? Well, he's the least interesting character, I think. I don't really mind his physics as much, because every single character has a little physic charge to them. It's called that. Donkey Kong Jr. is part of the heavyweights. As you can see, it takes forever for him to get up to speed. But once he does, he does have the highest top speed of everybody around. And he also has, because of his being the heavy class, he also has the highest weight. Therefore making it him easy to knock other people around. Because there's also interactions between the racers. Once you hit someone, the game decides which one of the characters is the heaviest and the one who is the the lightest of the characters, while interacting, gets knocked away. Donkey Kong Jr. will always win such a duel. Unless it's with Bowser, who is in the same heavyweight class. I got hit by his stupid egg. I'm sorry if I'm not that of a pro in this game. One thing I can say about myself is that I am better at the modern Mario Kart games. I even like to say that... Mario Kart 8 is the Mario Kart I am the best at. Then 7, then Wii, then DS, etc. The more new the game is, the better I am at it. Therefore concluding this first one and the oldest one, I'm technically the worst at. But I can get through it. Don't worry. The first track, as you can see, was the easiest of them all. Just a few simple turns. A lot of straight sections. Mario Kart Circuit 1 wasn't that hard. Now here in Donut Plains 1, the second course. Things become a little more tricky. Right, let's talk items now. We've seen me use a couple and the computers use one. Uh, uh, use a couple in the last Grand Prix. Or, oops, in the last track. Yeah, in the off-road sections. Don't steer around too long or you'll spin out. It's also a thing. Right, items. We were talking about uh, items. There's a couple of uh, very famous simple items, like uh, the one I'm getting now. Banana peels. Very easy in concept. Just leave them behind while you press the item button. That's how you leave them behind. And they simply lie around on the track waiting for someone to run over it. And if you hit it, you, sp you, know, you spin out. Kind of the same way uh, I just span out of the turn here. You can prevent spinning out by jumping. As long as you lose your contact with the road, it'll also reset your turning. Another way, more easy one, is just let go of the steering button, like I'm doing here. And you'll also stop your skidding. This only applies to off-road sections, to, um, to be precise. Asphalt, asphalt roads, this does not happen like the previous track, Mario Circuit, which, which, which was asphalt. Right, I'm lapping a few of these guys because they're way too easy. Yep, we're beginning on the easiest difficulty. I would like to show every engine class off, off. Not just because the CPUs are easier in... 50cc, but also because the carts are slower, so in case of Mario Kart, there's more than just difficulty. Riding around on these tracks feels differently in the lower engine classes than the normal ones. The normal one being the 100cc in this game, because the 150cc is unlockable. If you clear everything on 100cc, you unlock the 150cc. But I do consider it the highest engine class. It is the highest en engine class. So it's the one I'm using to end my project. 
Like I'm going to do with every racing game, like I said. Just go through everything twice. Trying to show off as many characters as I can. In this case, it's not a problem because there happen to be as many characters as as many Grand Prix I'm planning to do. Right, Ghost Valley 1. Yes, there's no 1 behind this for no reason. There are going to be more of these aesthetics. This one clearly being based off of the ghost houses in Super Mario World. Where most of this game is based off. It's clearly inspired by Super Mario World. Also something I like about Mario Kart. Every Mario Kart installment is always kind of inspired by its closest main Mario game that was released in the time that, that Mario Kart was released. In this case being Super Mario World. We'll see other examples uh, at the time I get to the other Mario Karts. Right, this track giving me no trouble at all. All I'm getting is bananas and coins. That's because I'm in first. It's also a thing that makes the item system a little bit more fair. The actual good items that you can use, like shells, mostly red shells, which are homing shells. Which you can throw t towards other drivers. And the... Uh, the stars, which make you invincible and give you an extra speed boost. The mushrooms, which give you a speed boost. Lightning, which makes everybody small and therefore slower instead of yourself. Those items you only get if you're far behind. Say 4th, 5th, 6th, even lower than that. Then you get those items. When you're in first, you only get some defending items like bananas, sometimes a green shell, and coins. Alright, what do the coins do? They're not like in a normal Mario game, where 100, collecting 100 gives you a 1-up. No, this game is a little more complicated than that. Grabbing coins will give you a little speed boost in this game. The same way it works in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart 8, where they return. Because they do uh, disappear in uh, after this game, only to return in Mario Kart Super Circuit, and then Mario Kart 7 and 8. The more coins you carry, the more extra speed you get, on top of the normal basic speeds your cart already has. Right. That's how those work. There is a maximum number of coins you carry to get that speed boost. I believe it's 10. Everything above the 10 doesn't give you a speed boost anymore. But it does help to keep your coin count higher, because if you get hit by something or drive off the track, you lose coins. And therefore speed, if you do not have more than 10. I might be wrong, might be a different number, but there is a cap of the number of coins you can carry. Bowser's Castle 1. Let's talk about the track now. Here we have some speed boosts. There's a new mechanic introduced here. These yellow bars make you jump automatically. It's not that I'm jumping. But with, by pressing the R button you can jump. But these things make you jump automatically. And it also introduces our first uh, big obstacle. I believe that was my own shell, wasn't it? You, uh, with shells you can choose to leave them behind you, but you can also shoot them forward like this. If you throw them behind you by holding the down button and then the item button, it'll be put behind you. If you just put the item, push the item button, button, it will be shot forward. And as you can see, it will go in a straight path, bounce off walls, until it hits somebody. That's how simple green shells work. Red shells are basically the same. Only they can't bounce off walls, but they have homing capabilities. So you do need to be careful if you throw it at, at someone, that, that someone is not with a wall between him, because the red shells can't go through walls, or bounce off walls like the green ones do. You won't be seeing me getting those on 50cc, because believe me, 50cc is easy enough to just see the first place all the time. Right, we get our second Mario circuit. Every Grand Prix in Mario Kart consists out of five tracks in this game. It, apparent, uh, it eventually goes down to four, starting from the next game. But in this game it's still five. Just like the number of laps you drive around on. Five laps in this game, three laps in later Mario Karts, because the tracks become longer. The five laps here is mostly because of this game not having too long of tracks but I don't mind they're fun to do 
really like the steering mechanics in these kinds of games. Really fun to do. It's the biggest reason I love Mario Kart. It just feels so natural racing around in here. Especially in 50cc where you're not bothered by the computers. Because once again they're easy computers. So they're easily left very far behind you. Right. See if I can troll somebody by putting a green shell just in front of the jumping. Doesn't look like it. Now you need to be very precise in where you put your items because the CPUs tend to go on the same path every single time. They have a programmed path to follow. Yeah, it's a little too far to the right. So you get past it. Anyway, first Grand Prix done. Easy mode. But I do want to show off this difficulty. Donkey Kong Jr. wins the gold. Right, there's a few more mechanics I need to talk about. That's also one of the reasons I am doing the Grand Prix twice. Because of me explaining all the mechanics and everything. I don't really have the time to focus on the race and everything. So I'm going to do that the second time I get past the Mushroom Cup. Right, Donkey Kong Jr. He's done with. Like I said, not really... One of my favorite characters. Not just because of this game, but in general. Because Donkey Kong Jr. doesn't appear in very much games. He doesn't appear at all anymore in these days. But he was still a thing back then. And of course I won every single race. It's not really a problem on 50cc. Alright, one more will be the final one. I do. Not just for this video, but also... In general, because the other two I'm going to switch up to 100cc, showing that off. And then return to do the real thing. Alright, after Donkey Kong Jr. This is mostly because of Mario Party, but I'm not a fan of Peach. Who is still called Princess in this game. This is before the Peach time. That said, Peach... Who is in the acceleration class in this game. Meaning she gets to her top speed really fast. But she is very light. Therefore easily knocked around. And ha doesn't have a very high top speed. And honestly that's how I like playing my Mario Kart. Even up to the modern ones. I'm the biggest fan of lightweight characters. I know they are a little bit slower. But Mario Kart, being a racing game and everything... Oh, screwing up here. Being a racing game and everything, it's easy to lose your control while going as fast as you can. Going as fast as the heavyweights do, you tend to screw up a little bit more. I like to have to control a little bit more. Plus Mario Kart is... Well, not so much in this lower difficulty. But Mario Kart is a game where you get bullied around a lot. This game does not really do that. Let me explain how the computers work in this game. As you can see, the computers don't really have the item system that I am using. Getting bananas, green shells, red shells, etc. No, the computers are programmed a little bit differently in this game. They do th these things in the modern Mario Kart, but they don't do it in this one yet. As you can see, Donkey Kong Jr. did throw a banana at me, but... Only Donkey Kong Jr. can throw bananas at you. Every single character in this game has its own item allied to it. Donkey Kong Jr., as you saw as an example, was the banana peels you can throw. He'll leave them behind him if you're behind him. He'll throw them over you if you're in front of him. And every character has its own item in this game. Mario and Luigi have the star... Thank god they don't get the speed boost that the normal star gives them. It just gives them the other effects. Peach and Toad have the poison mushrooms. Work just like the bananas or the shells. Uh, no, not the shells because if they throw them forward they still get left behind on the track. But the poison mushrooms work kind of like lightning does. It shrinks you if you touch them. Duncan Jr. has the banana peel, I said. Um, Yoshi has eggs you can throw. Work just like the 
green shells when you hit them. Only difference being that they do not move forward. Bowser has the fireballs he throws. Almost the same as the axe from Yoshi. Only difference being that the fireballs move around a little bit left to right. They don't stand st exactly still. And then there's Koopa Troopa who uses green shells. But also not in the way that I use them. If I throw them forward that they start moving over the track. For Koopa Troopa they always just stand still. Even when he throws them forward. Come on. You're one lap behind me. Don't bother me. So the items aren't really the thing the computers you have to worry about. It's not until the later Mario Kart, starting from Mario Kart Double Dash, where they really start to act like any human player would. In this game they're programmed on a straight path, have their own items to, to use, and even have a rubber band speed. The further you are ahead of them, not so much noticeable here in 50cc, but you can see it happen in the later ones. They have a rubber band difficulty, meaning the further ahead you are of them, the faster they start driving. And the other way around as well, the further you are behind them, the slower they start going. Oh, stupid Monty Mole. Here in Donut Plains 2, they start throwing in a new mechanic, as you can see. They were not present in Donut Plains 1, but here there are some holes in the track with Monty Moles jumping out of them. And if you happen to touch one, dang it. Come on, Peach. Well, I actually lose first place for once. Was my own fault. Here, here you can see Bowser's fireball, for an example. Seeing it wiggling around a little bit. Throws another one. Yeah, as you can see, the, com com the, the computer tends to go attack you with items if they are in range of you. Right now, as you can see on the bottom screen, where the map is displayed, you can see where everybody is. Bowser's further behind me now. And therefore, he's unable to reach me with his fireball, so he doesn't even try to attack me. If you are in the vicinity of your closest opponent, can be in front of you or can be behind of you, they will start attacking you. Depending on who it is, depends what item they use to attack you. Like I said, can be a Starman, can be Poison Mushroom, Fireball, Banana Peel. Yoshi Egg or Koopa Troopa Shell. Oh, big mistake in the turning here. Good thing I'm so far ahead. That's why I'm using these uh, I'm not very good with them characters early. Because I know 150cc I shouldn't be using Donkey Kong Jr. and Peach. Not so much because the character itself is not my favorite. But also a little bit because... The way their cards use are, are working aren't really my thing. And also because they are not really my fav favorite characters. I never used them myself in my own time. So I tend to skip out of them a lot, on them a lot. So I'm not really used to the way they work. Especially in this older Mario Kart. Which are a worldwide difference compared to what we're dealing with now. With Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And Mario Kart Tour, for example, which of being a mobile phone game and with the touch controls and everything being a completely different story entirely. With Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uses normal controllers. In fact, the same controller I'm using right now. Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. My favorite controller of them all. I really love the Pro Controller. Therefore giving away I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch again. Yeah, Nintendo Switch is a thing, guys. Even these old games you play on the Nintendo Switch. Alright, second Bowser's Castle. Is there any more mechanic I need to explain? Oh yeah, these uh, different color patches you see in some tracks, like this uh, gray little patches over there. That look a little bit differently. You see them on every track, that sometimes the tracks colored a little bit differently. But still, come on. It's still... Clearly a part of the track. Those are more slippery parts of the track. Right here, where I'm riding right now, which is the main part of the track, sort of say. Always gives you the normal physic, but this kinds of things always make you slip, slip around more. 
Donut planes two out of section like this as well in the final turn. And of course you always have the track hazards, which are in Bowser's Castle's case the thwomps going up and down, therefore hindering you. Be careful not to get caught underneath one of them because they will squish you and you lose a lot of time. You lose less time if you just ride against them. Not really in the position to show off items just yet because, well, I can show off the flattening here. <laughs> this is what happens if you end up underneath the thwomp. Man, I'm playing bad. I'm much better than the newer ones. But I still appreciate this game, I love this game. This was my very first racing game, guys. I had so much fun with this back in the day. I still love it. Even though it's a lot different than what the Mario Karts have become. And on the other hand, not that much different because a lot of the mechanics have been the same all this time. There's a lot of things which are Mario Kart 8 still, after all these years, never changed. Making the Mario Kart formula a success. It's obvious why this is the most popular racing series in the world. Right, one more mechanic I'd like to mention that's, as you can see, the top four gets its own little color scheme. And the fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth place don't get any points and they get treated a little bit differently. Even in the end results, whenever you're going around. They end up in the bottom screen. There's a reason for this. This game does not use the... Um, whatever position you end up being, you continue with that. And you get points awarded to whatever position you end up. Well, it kind of does, but it only applies to the first four spots. If you rank fifth or below, you have to start over. That's why this game has a life system, because if you look at my ranking and then to the left of that, there is a little card symbol with a 4 behind it. Cards times 4. That is my life count. This game uses lives. In this game and the next one, and even in Mario Kart Super Circuit, I believe, you have to rank 4th or higher to advance. If you rank 5th or below, you have to start this track over again. The game will say ranked out, does not count, try again, and takes a life. If you run out of life, your Grand Prix ends. So 5th to 8th place is a no-go in this game. I know it changes, starting from Double Dash, once again. Double Dash is the game that starts the modern Mario Kart era, I think. Where a lot of the physics and rules start really happening. Physics and rules we still use, even up to this day. But in these days, these were different times. Things worked a little bit differently. As you can see. It even forces you to end up in a certain position. In this case, fourth or higher. And only then it will award you points. And tally up your score. Awarding you gold, silver, bronze or nothing. Depending on what position you end up being. Alright, this Grand Prix is almost over. Koopa Troopa thinking he can hit me. Even though he's in last place. So I don't really know why he even bothered. Speaking of bothering the first place while you're in last yourself. Purple shell or blue shells. Blue shells are another thing in this game, thank god. But I still think it's a good addition to the Mario Kart items. There's another thing in this game yet. This is the only Mario Kart game that does not have the blue shell. I'm not too sure about Super Circuit. Super Circuit's the one I've played the least, to be honest. Even less than this one. But that's for later. Right, we win our second gold trophy. I'm going for all gold, gold trophies, by the way, so I'm going to try to win everything. That's something I'm going to attempt to do in every Mario Kart. Technically, getting silver or bronze is also enough to clear the game. 
but I'm not going to. I can easily win every single game in this, I'm pretty sure. Might be difficult because 150cc becomes quite difficult, but even then I'm going to try to get first place. Right, the videos will be organized in a way that, where I do two Grand Prix per video. I know they might be a tad long, especially this one because of all the explaining happening. So it goes over 30 minutes. Yeah, I see it's over 30, 30 minutes already. Next time, which will be tomorrow, because this is a weekend project, because it will not be too long. Tomorrow I'll be back with 100cc and doing the other cups. Hopefully a little less explaining. I think I've gotten all the mechanics done by now. Here we get a little glimpse of the battle mode, something I'm not going to cover, because this, re this requires two human players, at least, in this game. This way you can see a little bit how it works. This is not a racing mechanic. The battle mode is completely based off the item mechanic in this game. All you have to do here is use the items, same items you get in the normal mode, to knock the other player out three times and you win. But that's something I'm not going to cover because this is a single player let's play. See you tomorrow for the Star Cup and Special Cup on 100cc. Tricks out.